Hello there. Welcome to my podcast. I'm your host, Hans Sonnenberg. Welcome to my podcast, The Journey of Resilience and Rebirth, where every setback is a setup for a new comeback. This is Embracing Adversity, a Journey, Life Torn and Rebuilt, a podcast where we dive deep into the heart of overcoming insurmountable power of the human spirit to rise again and again. Today, we have a special guest joining on this podcast. It's Karen Walker. Karen recently received an autographed copy of my book, Embracing Adversity, A Life Torn and Rebuilt. Her enthusiasm for exploring new stories makes her a wonderful addition to our discussion. Welcome, Karen. We are excited to hear your thoughts and your perspectives. Hi, Hans. Thanks for having me. Good. I heard you bought an autographed copy. Yes, I did. And I have it right here. Let me see it. Good. Thank you very much. It was very exciting. Good. Let me ask a couple of questions to open up here. Uh, if you had to choose a ridiculous superhero name for yourself, because you're reading and you read short story, long story, uh, what would it be and what would your superpower be? Procrastination. Ah, procrastination. Yes, uh, yes. Yes. It's like uh, delaying any task until the yes. last minute. Is that yes. so? That's you? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. that's a good straightforward admission. Eh? And then I run around like crazy, like a chicken yeah. without a head. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Next question. What's the most embarrassing song you can help, help singing along when it comes on, let's say, in a supermarket. It happened to me. I, I went in a supermarket and my favorite song comes on and I was start dancing. And some other people started dancing too. So what's yours? The Margarita. Oh, yes. I think uh, this one? Yep, yep. That's a good one. I can tell you got the rhythm for that one. I won't sing to it, Hans, though, because you know I dance better than I sing. If you're reincarnated as an animal, what would that animal be? And what do you want to be and why? Well, I'm going to say an elephant because they're very loving animals with their families and they care for their babies and they just love one another. Yeah. You and that's know how what? I feel about my family. I love them very, very much. That's good. That's, that's a great response. Um, you want to hear my favorite animal? Sure. It's a sloth. Did I pronounce that right? Sloth? A sloth? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It lives it lives in a in a tropical forest. It always lives on one tree and it sleeps most of the time. It rests. Just enjoying the tree top and then once in a year it looks for a bride and it looks across the tree top. And if he sees a tree far away, I say, there's a mate I could go for. So he makes his way down. And the only time he is in danger, endangered is when he is on the ground because he moves so slow. And he is very vulnerable uh, to attack from other animals because of the slowness. So then he goes up to tree where he saw that, uh, that lady in a tree. And he makes his way slowly up, which is really hard for that animal going all the way up the tree. But in the meantime, that lady looks down there and says, let me see what he looks like. And if she thinks he's, he looks all right, I want to date him. Then she, <laughs> makes, <laughs> then she makes her way half down and to meet him. Right? If uh, it's a no-go, she just disappears in a canopy. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. That's a good life. That's a yeah, good life. That's cute. <laughs> Uh, did you ever had a really bizarre dream that stuck with you? And uh, what was it about? Yes, I've had quite a few bizarre dreams, but one that really sticks out to me is a gypsy had told us that if a giant had captured you and put you back on the ground, God would appear to you. So sure enough, I got captured one. He set me down on the ground. 
And I was at the top of my street and it was pitch dark and I saw a glow at the end of the street and it was God and he was going like this to me. And I said, and uh -huh. I ran back up to the house and I told my father, that dream just really sticks out to me. How about that? That's a, uh, were you scared? Yes. Oh well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely. It wasn't. It yes. wasn't your time yet, no. No. I still. I still want to have. I nope. still want to have some fun here. You know. Uh, uh. What's the uh, worst joke you ever heard? Okay. Um, I remember you told the, me one before. Yeah. What did the one skeleton say to the other? As far I, as. Oh, see now I messed it up. What? Uh, what did what? the one skeleton say to the other? Why they can't fight? Yeah, I think you mentioned that. Why don't skeletons fight each other? So, was that the the thing? Because they have no guts. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> I got the, the the end of the joke, thank goodness. But I think I messed up the beginning. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, if you were a flavor of ice cream, what would it be? On why would you be that flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Because I like chocolate. the I like the chocolate, the little bits of chocolate, and I like the flavor of the mint. Uh, good. It's my least flavor, uh, favorite one. Mint. I can't stand mint, so that's oh. not my my. <laughs> I, I I go for the rocky road. Uh, okay. It's full of twists and turns, uh, so I take that one. Do you have any funny habits or quirks I that shake. drives your friends or family crazy? I shake a lot. I cannot sit still, stand still, or lay still. And I have been told numerous times from the vibration, it gets on people's nerves. So I try. It's, it's that bad. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I try not to do that. When oh, I'm, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So what's the most childish thing you still love on unapologetically enjoy? Being funny and making people feel good, helping people. Just being the best person that I can be. I guess uh, my childhood thing was always jumping in puddles when I was little, and I'm still doing that. You know, when I go on a walk and I see a puddle, I want to jump in there. So that's mm -hmm. still my, <laughs> it stayed with me. Yeah? Uh, so if you were forced to get a ridiculous tattoo, what would it be? Well, I don't have a ridiculous tattoo, but I do have a tattoo. And it is a tattoo of an anchor. And my father was in the Navy, and so his name is on the top, and then my mother's name is on the bottom because she's the anchor of the family. That's a that's a. And great I can't tattoo. tell you where it's at. You can. Oh my so. god! <laughs> oh, I use my imagination. <laughs> okay. Okay. Leave, let's leave it with that. Have you ever had an embarrassing accident or mishap while on a date or any kind of formal event? I've had quite a few, but one that stands out to me most is I was on a date once and I had a skirt on and it was a wraparound skirt, but it did not wrap around all the way. And I didn't wow. know it. So we went wow, out to wow. dinner. Yes, we went out to dinner. I was like that the whole night. Then <laughs> afterwards, we went to a friend's house and uh. they said to me, your underwear is sticking out. And that's when I realized that my skirt did not wrap around all the way. And oh, the guy that I was with did not want to tell me because he didn't want to embarrass me. So he let oh, me walk around that, all night with my underwear hanging sweet. out. In a way, it's sweet of yeah. him. Uh, you know, because he didn't want to, he didn't know how to, how to say it yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember I was one time at the, I think it was at the German Society and they had a, a, a wedding engagement there. So, and I volunteered to help out, so I had to carry the hors around. So I never did that job before. So I'm walking in that hall with a tray of hors in my hand, holding my hands up. And once a sudden I tripped on the hors <laughs> with the whole plate, um, fell, over, fell over on the table to the guest. <laughs> oh my goodness. The one guy, the one guy said, Wow, what a nice way to serve desserts, uh, <laughs> appetizers. <laughs> all, right, oh. uh, all right, uh, I guess you, I know you have a lot of questions. You told me you want to ask me some questions. So maybe we got get to the first question. Okay, can I put my glasses on? That's good. Okay, what inspired you to write Embracing Adver 
embracing adversity and how did your personal experiences shape the narrative of your book? All right. Uh, I was inspired to write my book, Embracing Adversity, A Life Torn and Rebuilt, by my own experiences as a refugee during World War II, aiming to share the story of my resilience, hope, and unity. Uh, my personal journey really shaped my narrative uh, of the book and highlighted the themes of uh, faith, resilience, and the human spirit's ability to overcome adversity. And my autobiography serves as a beacon of hope, inspiring and change, and fostering compassion in the world that marked by division. And I, I also do my podcast, Embracing Adversity Journey, that complements the book by sharing stories of resilience and courage facing life's challenges that are taken from my book. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you describe and uh, specify a moment or event in your life that was particularly challenging and how you addressed it in your book? In Embracing Adversity, I vividly recount the harrowing experience of fleeing my homeland during World War II. I was a refugee navigating oppressive regimes and, multiple, and I was in multiple refugee camps before finding a new home in the United States. This challenging period in my life serves as a cornerstone of resilience, highlighting the struggles and triumphs of refugees and shaping the narrative of this book. My journey reflects the uh, unwavering belief in overcoming fear, uh, taking daring risks, and stepping outside my comfort zones to create a, an extraordinary life. And I hope it resonates with readers facing the same adversity. Okay. Uh, in your book, you discuss themes of resilience and hope. How do you per uh, personally define resilience? And what advice would you give to others trying to cultivate in their lives? I would define resilience as the unwavering strength and determination to overcome adversity, fear and challenges, embodying the indomitable human spirit's capacity to bounce back from setbacks. In my book, I, I emphasize the power of resilience in facing life's trial and tribulations, inspiring readers to embrace their inner strengths, strive for a brighter future. And my advice to cultivate resilience includes embracing fear, taking risks, and stepping outside your own comfort zones, huh? and believing in one's ability to overcome obstacles with courage and perseverance. I encourage readers to tap into their inner resilience, fostering a positive mindset and seek support from loved ones and view challenges as an opportunity for growth and transformation. Uh, my narrative serves as a guide for those seeking to cultivate resilience in their lives, inspiring them to face adversity with hope and courage and determination. Okay. All right. How was the process of writing this book affected your perspective on your past experiences and your approach to future challenges? The process of writing Embracing Adversity has allowed me to reflect deeply on my past experiences as a refugee and the challenges I faced providing a new lens to which to view my journey of resilience and hope. By uh, delving into my own narrative and sharing with others, I have gained a deeper understanding of the strengths and the courage I exhibited during difficult times. This reflection has reinforced my belief in the power of resilience, hope, and the human spirit's capacity to overcome adversity. And, uh, as I look towards the future, my approach to challenging has been shaped 
by my own story, inspiring me to tackle obstacles with uh, courage, uh, determination, and a positive mindset. And writing this book uh, has really reinforced my belief in the transformative power of facing adversity head on and has instilled in me the sense of optimism and the resilience in the face of future challenges. Okay. Your story includes a tradition from a war-torn environment to establishing a new life in America. What were some of the unexpected challenges you faced during this transition, and how did you overcome them? Yeah. Uh, uh, during my transition uh, from a war-torn environment to establishing a new life in America, I faced uh, various unexpected challenges. Uh, these challenges included uh, adapting to a new culture, uh, overcoming the language barriers, adjusting to different societal norms, and most of them, and rebuilding my life from scratch. To overcome these obstacles, I really relied on my resilience and determination and the willingness to learn and to adapt. Uh, I sought support from communities, and uh, I embrace the new opportunities. I persevered through difficult times with a positive mindset. And by facing these challenges head on and remaining resilient, I was able to overcome the unexpected and build a new life here in America. Okay. Uh, the book is a source of inspiration for many facing personal adversities. What do you hope your readers take away from your story? Uh, I hope that readers of Embracing Adversity uh, will be inspired by my story of resilience, hope, and the human spirit's capacity to overcome adversity. And my aim uh, for the reader is to take away a message of courage and uh, strength and determination in face of challenges. Okay. I I hope my I also hope that my narrative will instill a sense of optimism and belief in one's ability to overcome obstacles, and uh, a reminder that no matter how difficult the circumstances, there's always hope for a better future. So my story, uh, I encourage reader to embrace their inner resilience, seek support whenever needed when they approach life's challenges with a positive mindset and unwavering determination. And I think ultimately my hope is that my book serves as a beacon of hope and inspiration for those navigating their own adversities, fostering a sense of unity and compassion and understanding in a world often that uh, that's marked by division. Okay. Uh, we also host a podcast related to the themes of your book. Can you share how this platform has allowed you to expand on the messages and embracing adverse adversity? Yeah. Uh, so my podcast, Embracing Adversity Journey, I have been able to further explore and expand on the themes presented in my book. The podcast uh, serves as a platform for me to share stories of resilience, uh, strength, and courage in facing life's challenges, uh, offering personal anecdotes from my book, inspiring interviews on uplifting messages, and by uh, delving into the topics such as transformative power on facing adversity, the impact of caregiving, love, on the journey of grief, I extended uh, the conversation beyond the pages of my book. And the podcast, I would say, is it provides a dynamic medium for connecting with listeners, sharing additional insights, and fostering a sense of community around the themes of resilience and hope and unity. And uh, uh, it allows me to reach, reach a much wider audience 
and continue inspiring others uh, to embrace their own inner strengths and uh, overcome adversity with uh, courage and determination. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us in this podcast today. Embracing Adversity, a life tone and rebuild. We hope the discussion has inspired you to dive into the book and explore the themes of resilience and hope. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider uh, subscribing to my podcast or leaving a review. Uh, your feedback helps me to reach more listeners who can benefit from these stories and overcoming adversity. So don't forget to visit my website for more resources and updates uh, on also upcoming episodes. All right, this is Hans Sonnenberg reminding you that resilience is not just about bouncing back, but also moving forward with a greater strength and wisdom. Until next time, stay strong and keep rebuilding your life. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye. Goodbye, Karen. Bye, Hans. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.